y'all think y'all grown, but you're not as grown as you think you are. You guys are sophomores now. So let's just talk about some lessons that you guys learned along the way while you were filming this that makes you think that you're grownish. Ooh, oh, yes, I can hear myself. Well, first and foremost, hi, guys. Yay! We're so happy to be here with you all. Back in Atlanta, we're from Atlanta, so we're so happy. Hey, ATL. And it's so crazy because Spellman, that was like the very first time we sang together at the summer camp, so we feel like we're home. So I'm so happy to be here. But yeah, what does grownish mean to us? I definitely feel like it means a lot of things. You know, I'm 20 and my sister's 18. And it's that weird moment where it's like you feel like you're grown. I am an adult. I am. I have to remind myself every day. But still, I'm learning so much. So it's like I think I know everything. But then again, I don't. But I'm learning and I'm figuring it out. So that's what grownish means to me. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's just that weird moment of not really feeling like you're completely grown, but you are, and having to learn how to do things in the world that you didn't know how to do before without your parents, you know, so it's really fun. Yeah, that's what that means to us. Your dad looking like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> and Jenny, I think supposed to be adults. Oh, absolutely. I have two kids. My kids, Luca, who one of the characters is named and Luca, and I got to tell you, I'm a NWA, like, you know, Migos, and I have my six-year-old son in the back who's, you know, <laughs> it, it, I'm not a good influence. Put it, put it, put it. But yeah, I'm, I'm a kid, and I'm just enjoying myself and having a good time, so yeah. So Jenny, for you, let's talk about the college experience. Even if you're not a college student, or if you are, and you watch the show, you can reminisce about the good old days. Why do you think this show is able to capture college in an organic way that resonates with everybody? And how were you able to capture the authentic college experience? Um, I went to USC, um, and just actually, like Chloe said, Spelman was actually my first choice. I didn't get financial aid, so I ended up at USC. But gosh, I wish I would have had this experience. <laughs> Um, I would say to me, I think why we resonate so largely with audiences is I think we try to be authentic. Um, you know, when I am scouring the comments in like the Instagram feeds and stuff, I just think that people feel like they can relate. Whether you've been in college before or you're currently in college, I just think they're all experiences that we remember. Our first time when we fell in love, our first time when maybe we dabbled with some narcotics. I mean, the bottom line is I think people relate. And I think this generation particularly, we try to be honest with the music, we try to be honest with the language, and sometimes those characters are flawed and there's moments that you don't necessarily want your children to watch, but they're honest. And the only way that will resonate with college students is to just to be authentic. Yeah, I think we've all dated somebody who smokes weed all the time. <laughs> and just so y'all know, it's very annoying. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you guys this what are some of the rules for dating on campus because obviously there's a different rules when you have to see somebody all the time you guys run in the same circles so if you had to give some of the top rules for what you should do when you're dating on campus what would they be Ooh. okay well for me I would have to say keep it private. Don't have everybody up in your business, right? Because if things go wrong, you don't have to go back and explain yourself, right? And you can focus on yourself, your work, all of that good stuff, and then keep it private and cute and private. Yeah. Keyword private. Yeah. I would have to say keep some space, a little bit of space between the two of y'all because mystery is still really cool and really fun when it comes to relationships. And you know, when you like, it's cool when you like can be admired from afar. It's like, I'm, I'm doing my stuff, I'm on my work, like this is me and we can have our little fun times when we get together, but after that work, I'm all about it, you know? <laughs> Anything, Jenny? In, I would say, honestly, from my experience, I would say don't do relationships. You're in college. Go have a good time. You're going to be, I, I mean, honestly, if I could do it over again, I would. I would go have a and I would say make sure you go to class. You know, sometimes you get in a relationship, you stop going to class, you play spades all day. All right. <laughs> oh, y'all laughing because y'all know. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about season two, the cast.
entering their sophomore year. So you think you have a better handle on social life, on academics. What makes this season different than season one? Oh, wow. So with second season, it's pretty cool because you get to dive more into the other characters' backstories. And that's been super duper fun to explore. And not only do you explore uh, Zoe and Luca's love life and relationships, and how you deal with social media and figuring out your sexuality, what is accepted in today's society and all of that. So it's been pretty fun being on Grownish. Like, I get so excited to get the scripts for the table read every week. Like, I'm a fan myself as if I wasn't a part of it. So it's pretty fun. And I'm happy you guys seem to like the very first episode. So, yeah. Um, also, what's explored is our sisterhood is kind of really dived into more and finding our individuality as sisters. Um, and as you know, she, she has like her relationship going on. So I'm like, it's, it's um, really interesting to see my reaction to that and how that plays into it because we are so close um, and how your sister's opinion really matters when dating somebody. So yeah. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to have a little love line this season? I don't know. She does. She just doesn't know about it yet. She does. <laughs> she does. But also, I'd say this year, I think we spent a lot of time, season one, focusing on Zoe and her kind of love triangle between Aaron and Luca. And this year, we got to see last year what like powerhouse talents we had in each of our actors. And so we really wanted to explore like, you know, their backstories, like Chloe said, their relationships, and we have arcs for each of our characters. And then, you know, beyond that, I think we wanted to really focus and tap into the theme of like, who are we? Why are we here? So a lot of our storylines will play into that. And just really, you know, diving into a little bit more of consequences and kind of seeing more of what that academic and school life was. So I think this year we're going to have a lot of fun exploring more of our characters and getting like a pretty well-rounded backstory for all of them. All right, now let's talk about fashion on campus. Y'all all look good in here, by the way. Yeah. So good, because I remember going to class and I did not look this good. So let's talk about your top three fashion must-haves in school on campus. Ooh, for me, I'd have to say my fanny pack. I'm obsessed with fanny packs. Mine's actually in the back room. Some good, cute sneakers and some lipstick and also shades. I don't have to put on makeup. Just pop the shades on in a color and bam. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Definitely lipstick for the days where my skin is not being nice to me. And comfortable sneakers and comfortable sweats. Yeah. I don't know. Back in my day, sweats. <laughs> I mean, always sweats, always sneakers for me. And a backpack, a good backpack. I don't know. <laughs> so I still dress like I'm in college. All right. <laughs> now let's talk about social media for a second. We all love it. It keeps us connected with our loved ones, our friends, our favorite celebrities. So what are some of the guidelines that you have to remember before you hit post? Oh, what are some of the guidelines we follow? You know, honestly, I feel like the key to social media is just being yourself. You see all of these different accounts, and you got the face tune and all of that, and you start comparing yourself to what really isn't real in the first place. But, you know, if you just stay true to yourself, you'll be good. A lot of times, we both have to approve the picture, and I like to go and pick the right filter. So the guideline, as long as we both approve, you got a good, not corny caption, then we good and we post it, so. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. Um, it's interesting because we explored this topic with their characters this year, and there was an interesting conversation that we had in the writer's room about us as women and professionals, and in their particular cases, their characters are athletes. And there was a conversation about crossing the line when you transition into what is inappropriate for social media. And you know, I have to be honest, there's those moments where I'm in the car and I'm doing the selfies and I want to do myself with the selfies in the mirror in a bathing suit. And then I'm like, but God, I'm a, I'm a professional. And we kind of started to explore the idea of 
our sexuality and us being professionals and crossing that line and, and it being, you know, mutually exclusive. Like, why as women can't we be multi-layered? And, you know, so it, it became an interesting conversation and it, it actually spun into a really interesting arc for these two characters. And so we'll explore that this year. But for me, it's all about my kids and, you know, <laughs> what's too much on my social media, honestly. Now let's get back to dating on campus because this is a really big deal and you guys are going to have your love lines this season. Yours carrying over from season one and you have a new boo. So clearly people have roommates, right, when we're in college. So what are the rules about like your man coming to your room and you're not there? Ooh, well, I feel like you all will have to tell me more about this because right now I'm all about music and I really haven't had a dorm room where a guy could come through right now. So you all will have to answer this one for me. I think you all would have to educate us on that one. Yeah, because I don't know. And he said, don't do it. Don't date at all. And, kind of <laughs> and I say, bring him back to your room. I definitely say that. I just say, don't just bring one. Sorry, guys, I'm being real. Have fun. You guys are in college. <laughs> hey. Sorry, parents. <laughs> Do it safely. Uh, Jenny, I got to ask you then, as the EP, where does this STD storyline come from? Oh, from those last are just season. jokes. You're talking about the yeah. Nomi stuff? Oh, no, those are just jokes. Those are just jokes. It felt like she knew a lot about Z-Packs and everything. Well, I think we were doing a callback <laughs> to season one when she went into the restroom with that girl. But unfortunately, we haven't tackled the STD story yet. But we'll get there. Oh, so we are going to get there. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Y'all make sure y'all all get tested before you do anything. Use protection. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, let's talk about some um, motivation. We do have some people that actually sent in some questions. What's the motivation that keeps you driven, and how do you stay so positive and filled with light for you, Jenny? Oh, gosh. Um, what keeps me motivated? I would say my family, one. I mean, my children. Um, and honestly, I love what I do. And so the work itself really keeps me motivated. I mean, um, I, I had what was a little bit of a career in a singing group before I became a writer. And it was something that came kind of easy, but I was never passionate about it. And once I fell into the writing, it was like suddenly it clicked. And now my husband has to be like, Ginny, put the laptop away. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Can you focus on the kids? Can you focus on me? And Honestly, it's just I love it so much that the work itself keeps me motivated. Coming here, it's like I have like tears in my eyes when I'm listening to the audience like laugh because I'm like, oh, I remember the joke. I know the blood, sweat, and tears of being in that writer's room for 14 hours and 17 hours and the fights. And so it's like, honestly, it's like giving birth to another baby. And I love it with all my heart. And so the work itself just really keeps me motivated. And then honestly, seeing the works of, of other black writers and writers in general. But I mean, I see the work, you know, Kenya Barris obviously is a, a genius. And then I see what Donald Glover's doing with Atlanta. And honestly, I get in my own head and I'm like, can I do that? And it only pushes me further to be like, well, you got to try. So for me, the work itself keeps me unbelievably motivated. Well, since we're talking about passion for Chloe and Hallie, you guys are clearly very passionate about what you do for a living with the music, with the acting. So how did you know that was your passion and when did you decide this is going to work? You know, for me personally, it started when I was five years old. I'm the little sister, so I would always look to her and anything she would do, I would do. But when music really resonated with me was when uh, we used to go to this library across the street from our house and they were selling this pink CD. And I gravitated towards it because it was pink. But there was this beautiful lady with a big flower in her hair and her name was Billie Holiday. And I took it home and I listened to it over and over and over again. And I was like, wow, I was just fascinated. And I was like, you know what? I want to give people that feeling that she gave me with her voice. You know, it was like the literally, it was like the literal sound of love. And I was like, I can do that. I want to do that. So that was how that all started. And we always loved being in front of a camera and entertaining. And so that the acting kind of came naturally as well. So that was for me. Yeah. That was <laughs> nicely said. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. For me, the moment when I realized, I believe, I think I was like four, and you were there too, and we went to this concert. <laughs> And uh, the, who was playing at the concert, it was Beyonce, Alicia Keys, and Missy Elliott. Yep, and yeah, you all remember? It was here in Atlanta, and we had the nosebleed seats all the way in the top, and I had my uh, crazy in love binoculars, and I was looking down, and I was like, wow, I wanna perform on that stage just like that. And ever since, that kinda, you know, has just been in my heart. And ever since then, you know, we started singing around Atlanta, then we started doing YouTube covers, and while we were posting those YouTube covers, we started creating our own music. Our dad, who's here now, he actually sat us down at the table, and he was like, girls, you all need to learn how to write your own songs. So we looked up song structure and he taught us how to use figurative language in your songwriting. And from then we just continued to write and we've always, our parents have always taught us if you don't know how to do something, do it yourselves. And think about it, we were like 10 and eight years old, what producers are really gonna take a 10 and eight year old seriously? So we started creating everything ourselves and it just started from there. And right now it's crazy to think we just put out our album this year that we executive produce, <laughs> produce and wrote everything on. So, you know, we're just so happy to be here and then to be on the show Grownish and also involve our music in it as well. We wrote and produced the theme song too and I'm so excited. It still gives me chills to hear it every, every time we watch an episode. And yeah, we're just really grateful for what we do. And yeah, we love it, so. Well, listen, we all appreciate you ladies for coming out because this was really important and very special for you guys to get this special preview before anybody else has a chance to see it. So make sure you guys remember January 2nd, hashtag it. And Chloe and Hattie, y'all are fan favorites on the show. Everybody loves you. Don't you get a feeling every time you see them come on, you be like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You know, and Jenny, clearly you've done a great job as far as developing. <laughs> Hey, well, it's just really exciting for us to actually be in the room and see this as history is being made. And thank you all so much for coming out and joining us. And make sure you guys use that hashtag. It's hashtag Gronish, at Gronish. Chloe and Hallie are here. Jenny Henry is here. So make sure you all sh support. Thank you, guys. Oh, Have my. a good night. <laughs>